what do you think we can do at home to heal our bodies, to improve our immunity? Not all of us are going to be able to go into this seminar. Of course, you have your, your immunity meditations, which we're going to give out at the end of this. But what are the thought processes, the things that we can start embodying and living in quarantine right now and for the yeah. rest of our lives to start healing? Yeah. And this is a really great conversation because it, it, in order for us to do that, we have to just understand a little bit more of the science behind how we interact with our environment. So, so if you have a, you know, a, 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 a perception in your outer environment of some type of danger or threat, that the reaction or the response to that stimulation begins to activate the fight or flight nervous system. You're mobilizing energy to prepare yourself for that danger. And when the body perceives that danger and it's a big threat, it doesn't hold back on the amount of energy it's deciding to use, it goes all in. So for the short term, that's fine. But uh, if you keep doing it over and over again, uh, you keep knocking your brain and body out of balance and that's what stress is. And the, rep the re repetition of that, keep knocking the body out of balance, begins to weaken the organism. So when a person is perceiving a danger threaten their outer world and they turn on those adrenal hormones, uh, they're putting all their energy for that threat in their outer world. There's no energy in their inner world for, for repair, for growth. So a person who's constantly feeling fear uh, because they believe something out there is going to get them, then um, they're more more susceptible to things in their outer environment and their immune system is compromised. So they actually have more of a propensity for infections, uh, for foreign agents or invaders, because now their body is reacting and constantly responding to the outer world. So um, our research shows that if you trade those emotions of uh, fear, um, uh, of worry, of anxiety, of any vigilance, and you can open your heart and i know that that doesn't seem natural or normal during these times but if not now when uh and and if you can begin to feel gratitude and appreciation and settle your body into the present moment four days of feeling an elevated emotion would actually strengthen your immune system by about 50 percent we we've done the research to show that once energy makes it into your heart the body begins to it's so objective that it doesn't know the difference between the emotion you're feeling by thought alone and some emotion you would feel from some reaction in your environment. Your body in that state is beginning to believe it's safe enough to relax into the present moment. And, and so when that occurs, the immune system begins to upregulate and it begins to make these antibodies. Um, and those antibodies are the body's natural defense against bacteria and viruses. They're the shields that protect the body from foreign invaders. And, and four days of doing that, imagine if you practice doing that uh, every single day. I think by working with your body and elevating your emotional state, you could literally, you could literally become more resistant uh, or more um, in, in, in a state of order, independent of your outer environment. So what you're saying is that we, we should be listening to what governments are saying, to what medical doctors are saying, respecting the guidelines, being in isolation, making sure that we're practicing social distancing. But at the same time, we cannot let fear grip us because fear reduces our immunity. But if we're able to move to a state of gratitude, appreciation, even through, say, the practice of a morning gratitude ritual, right? During meditation or thinking about sure. what you're grateful for before going to sleep. In four days, your immunity goes up 50% and you have studied this and measured it. Yes, yes. It's a, you know, in order for that to happen, you're actually sending a signal, uh, a new information to your immune system to begin to become prosperous, to begin to grow, to begin to repair to begin to gain more energy. And so the army, the inner army becomes more uh, abundant. It becomes more awakened. It becomes more alive. And, uh, and that's when energy makes it into our heart and we feel more whole. And uh, that's when we begin to reset the baseline of anxiety in, in our brain and body. And, and uh, the immune system begins to, to really do, do its uh, natural job. 
Um, there is no relative time, but I will tell you that you'd have to understand a little bit more about how the body works, not completely, but to get a better understanding, say, of gene expression, right? So uh, most people have a reaction to something in their outer world. And, and when they have a sh an event that has a strong emotional charge, the change in their internal chemistry causes them to narrow their focus on the cause of it. And the brain takes a, a snapshot and that's called a memory. And so the brain is kind of a record of past memories and the body emotionally feels those memories. And so many times the signal emotionally from the event begins to select a gene that begins to downregulate. And every time the person thinks about the past event over and over again, they're producing the same chemistry in their brain and body and stimulus and response, thought and feeling, uh, image and emotion is conditioning the body into the past. So it begins to program the gene and the gene starts to make cheaper proteins. It downregulates and enzymes and hormones and the body starts moving further out of balance. And so the person then thinks neurologically within the memory of that experience and feels chemically within those emotions and how they think and feel is their state of being. So many times the gene starts to be activated after a, a strong emotional event. So then how could we then begin to change that gene expression. So it would make sense then if you could feel an elevated emotion and you could combine a coherent brain and there's a science to doing that and we know how to teach people how to do that with an elevated emotion and combine those two. And you can teach people how to be so present that they can begin to see a new future or imagine a new future uh, there comes a moment that if they did it properly if they started feeling the emotion of that event before it took place in other words you can't wait for your healing to feel wholeness you can't wait for some type of physical change to feel gratitude that's living in separation or lack that's waiting for something out there to tell you you're changed in order for you to feel that kind of separation or emptiness taken away. But if you start to feel the emotion, the stronger the emotion you feel from the inner event, the more you're gonna pay attention to the picture in your mind. In a sense now, you're changing your brain and body from living in the past present reality to living in a future present reality.